Oh, it's always nice to come up to Dharma Field. Um, so hello to all of you and also to the folks who are out there someplace watching us. <laughs> um, yeah, it's great to see Steve when I came in and I see Norm back there, <clears throat> my Dharma brothers. Um, and some old faces. Um, um, but one thing, you know, you know, every, there's a few more gray hairs with folks that I, you know, I don't have any. You know, so, <laughs> anyway, um, no, we, we shared a kind of family journey back in those days with uh, Katagiri Roshi. Uh, Steve and his sons played basketball in my backyard with the garage. Uh, Norm, we played Christmas carols and sang Christmas carols. So, yeah, he had the basketball. Yeah, oh, see, yeah, right. <laughs> Excuse me. That's what I mean. You know, no gray hairs with me. <laughs> anyway, um, but you know, uh, this coming March first will be uh, uh, 2022. Will be Category Roshi's 33rd. It's called. Uh, 33rd Sanju San Kaiki, which is 33rd Memorial Service. He died March 1st, 1990. And uh, in Japan, a 33rd Memorial is pretty significant because um, all the people who knew, you know, whoever died, old grandpa or whatever, you know, themselves, would be in their 80s or 90s, 33 years later. So it's kind of like the last kind of gathering where families, they had would have, Japan has a lot of that memorial service thing. You know, every, you know, 49 days, one year, seven years, 15, 33rd. Next, this coming year is the 33rd anniversary, which would be nice you know, to celebrate. Um, uh, and uh, that, that is, uh, you know, the, you know, the Katagiri Roshi was, uh, well, you know, he was significant in my life because I came to Zen, I wasn't looking for Buddhism, but bottom had fallen out you know, at that particular time, you know, and so I really stumbled on the Zen Center, and I just sat Zazen that first day, and in that Zazen, it's like I, I somehow I quieted and got grounded enough in myself to deal with what was right in front of me to deal with where things were to see it you know and say hey this is where it's at so get your act together and you know stand up where you are so that kind of uh, so i've told that kind of that was the, that was my introduction to uh zaza uh, but our our usual way, let's let's talk about that. That's, what I want to talk about this morning is zazen. Uh, if we look at our usual way of looking at things, there is a viewer and what is happening. You know, and either you know, I, the viewer, like it or 
ho-hum, or I don't like it. So that's constantly coming up. Do you like COVID-19? No, but here we are. You know, do you like getting older? Well, that's pretty good. But it also, I can't keep getting 80 and 18 confused, you know. I, I'm in my 80s, but I think I'm 18, you know, but my body catches up with me. So, then. so anyway, we always, you know, there's always that, you know, we use a technical term, a dualistic understanding. It's our usual way. We like and we dislike. And, you know, if things are going our way, we're happy, you know, and if they're not going our way, you know, we're, I don't know, depressed, angry, whatever, you know. So this is our usual way. We're all there. We all do it all the time. Katagiri Roshi did it, you know, the Buddha did it, you know, I do it. So it's our, our way of negotiating in life. We kind of try to move toward what we like and, you know, kind of avoid what we dislike. But the truth is, the more fundamental truth, is that real life is going beyond my take on it, beyond COVID or no COVID. It's going. Real life is going. You know, we're, we all are getting older. And where are we heading? You know, we're moving, you know, step towards step toward that there's a wooden han you know in a traditional monastery you know uh, it says it's like a doorbell you know but it's a wooden one you know so it's like a little reminiscent of old times you know but on that han it, this is all over japan you know and we have it too you know it says life and death are the great matter impermanence is swift so that is the issue. We all are there. It's beyond your take on it. I like to eat healthy foods and I like to exercise. And I think it's keeping me really young, sort of. <laughs> but, you know, life's moving on. Even if I do the best of all of that, still, where are we heading? You know, we don't think about it when we're in our 20s, or 30s, or 40s, or 50s by then. But 60, we start thinking about retiring. And then, you know, from there, it's, you know. Anyway, all I'm saying is real life is happening. All life is interwoven, interpenetrated. If I say this, Dogen says, see that in this and this in that. You know, we might like something called this, but this is also arising and disappearing. All life is moving. It's, you know, that pulse, you know, life is aliveness. It's happening. So in a sense, you know, there is I and it, but it is I. And I is it, you know, it's, if you look deeply, we say, what is truth? So truth is life's lifing beyond my take on it. Hello, you know, this is where we are. It's moving, it's alive, I'm alive. So when we talk about Zazen, if we think about Zazen, as kind of a, like something to do to get somewhere. Yes, in a dualistic way, we could say, we're all here because we've experienced something nice about Zazen. You know, like I calm down a little bit, just a little. 
or you know or i get some ideas you know like wow this is wow this is where it's at you know so we think zazen's good but you know after the years you know well, my life is still going on. I think I'm going to try yoga. Yoga, at least you're moving around, you know. So I did that too, you know. And, you know, so we're always, you know, fishing out there, you know, like trying to find the answer. It's some level, you know, it's like, but if so, if Zazen is, this is a fundamental teaching. If zazen is considered a means to an end, it's really delusion. Yes, it on a temporal level, or we could say a relative level, if you want to use that word, um, it is a means to an end. You feel more relaxed. You feel more aware. You feel more mindful. You feel more you know, settled, you could say. It is truth with a small t. But the big truth is life's life. You know, it's, you know, beyond, if I, I think I'm going to get somewhere, where are we heading? We're all heading toward life and death. It's the great matter. So how can we be alive in death, you know, and be, be one with, not just death, but how can we be alive with a flat tire? How can we be alive with, you know, wearing a mask, you know, if you're a clerk in a store all day or a hospital nurse, you know, or a doctor, you know, or human being, you know, it's like, uh, so all, all, all that is, uh, you know, it's like on the relative term is where we operate. What I'm trying to get to is Zazen is not a means towards an end. If you look at the ancestors, that, they, that practice, that fundamental practice from the Buddha's time, the fundamental practice that Bodhidharma brought to China, that fundamental practice that was transmitted from China into Japan through the monk named Ehe Dogen, that, that practice is, you know, um, you know, is, is not a means to an end. Um, that practice is like uh, Dogen's teacher, Tendo Nyojo, says, few know sitting as sitting. So what is few know sitting as sitting? Uh, another phrase is, you know, it is said that Zazen is good for nothing. So what do you mean when you say Zazen is good for nothing? It's the fundamental practice. So that teaching, you know, if you look at it yourself, that Zazen is not a means to an end. You know, it is that. Yeah, be careful to say it's not a means to an end because it is that on a relative level. But on a fundamental level, life is just life. Where are you going? It's a means to nowhere. You still have to deal with, you know, having cancer, or you still have to deal with, you know, having to make frequent bathroom stops when you're getting older. You still have to deal with, you know, like, you know, life. So that quality where how do i deal with all of that you know the the sort of like uh buddhism is for all beings it's for the well-being of people buddhism you know what is the well-being 
that is there for us in Buddhism, our Buddhist teaching, that teaching is be alive in moment. Be alive in this moment. Me give a lecture. I'm kind of thinking, threatening, going, you know. Yesterday I was kind of free. I was, you know, out there, you know, taking care of bees. I liked that, you know, it was really great. Giving a lecture isn't my choice of what I, you know, because the night before, the day before, it's like, you know, you're looking at the wall, so to speak, you know, like, where am I? What do I have to say to anybody? You know, it's like, but the fundamental release, so to speak, is be alive in moment, wherever you are, good or bad. There's nothing to judge. Is it good talk, bad talk? You know, you could say good talk, you could say bad talk, you know, but the real issue, can we be alive in moment? This is to live, Katagiri Roshi says, the truth to live is to live. To live, you know, is really a matter of everydayness. It's really this day, this morning, you know, what, uh, what's the rest of your life today is to take care of where you are. So that way is, um, is really, we say Buddha way, which is take this moment, take care of where you are. And I know I've said, lectured this same thing, you know, many times coming here. But even though there's a morning prayer, morning prayer is waking up this morning. I vow with all beings, because we are all beings. We are, I am you, you are me this morning. Your life is affecting my life. My life is affecting your life. You know, we talk about oneness, but it's right in front of us. So can I be alive in this moment and just be here? That quality is, uh, it's, it's for everyday living. So the gata, or like morning prayer, is waking up this morning, I vow with all being, beings to realize everything without exception, embracing the 10 directions. So let me just say, to realize everything without exception, is to take care of this time of COVID, be here. If you were kind of locked down, quarantined, be there. What do you do if you're in isolation, you know, in a prison? Be there. Can you do it? Can I do it? You know, who knows? Can anybody do it? To be there is living, whatever your situation. So that is the practice. If we attach to zazen you know, as a means to an end, that will wear out at some point. You know, you might sit right to the end of your life. Well, that's great. It's really good. But the end of your life is the end of your life. You know, so what good is it? You know, we could say on the more absolute level, on a more, you know, like fundamental level, you know, always say, you know, truth, you know, the truth, the truth to live is to live. It's this moment. So that's why in Dogen, when he, you know, talks about Zazen and uh, what he brought back from China, Dogen was already a Rinzai monk, you know, and there, you know, there are different flavors, there are different streams of Buddhism that came, came down through human history. Um, but that Soto Zen stream, which was Katagiri Roshi's kind of lineage, that came from a monk, you know, in, from China to Japan through monk Dogen and his teacher Tendo Nyojo. 
So when this Tendo Nyojo, who says, you know, uh, that Zazen is, uh, you know, is good for nothing, or that, you know, uh, he's, he said this statement that Zazen, you know, if you know sitting as sitting. So if you know, if you know sitting as sitting, it's like, don't look for something. Just take care. Uh, maybe you sat at nine o'clock zazen before. Just take care, sitting as sitting. And then people say, oh, I had a bad zazen. I wasn't very good. You know, I, my mind was all over the place. Boy, I was thinking of this and I was thinking of that. And, you know, uh, I had a, it was a lousy zazen, you know. I better sit more so I get better. I get better, yes. What is better? Better, oh, so better is like, it says think not thinking. So I'm gonna let, and then monk says, how do you think not thinking? That's thinking, right? Yeah, okay. But then he says, Dogen says, how do you think not thinking? He says, non-thinking. Okay, so then I say, okay, I gotta sit up straight, be with it. All right, I'm gonna think not thinking, okay. Just drop off body, what you feel when my butt hurts, or you know, my legs, you know, just sit. Okay. Then, you know, think, hmm, I got it. You know, it's already you're thinking, you know. So, so think not thinking, just be alive in this moment. Drop off your evaluating mind i like it i dislike it is it good am i is it a good zazen bad zazen am i getting anything from it you're not getting it don't get you know yeah you're getting some things from it that's good you know but really if you're always looking for the carrot you know it's like having a piece of steak you know on a on a string out in front of you if you're a dog you know pole yeah you're always chasing after good zazen you know or, so suffering is involved in that you know because we never always get what we want and even if we get what we want we get tired of it and we want something else so where's human suffering is involved with being tossed by that relative like and dislike so Sazen is to go beyond that, is be alive in moment, wherever you are, beyond like or dislike. We have likes and dislikes, but take care of likes and take care of dislikes. That, that is the practice. It's living. It's not in a church building, necessarily. It is in a church building. It is... This is that, that is this. Be alive wherever you are. So that quality is really, you know, zazen, or we say upright sitting. Um, just, just to close with then, you know, Kedigiri Roshi, you know, he, um, you know, uh, Steve edited this book of Category Roshi's lectures. You've, you've all seen this. So, or if you haven't, I recommend it. <laughs> but the prologue is <coughs> so right on, you know, talking about this whole theme, you know. But here he says, uh, uh, He says, if you believe there is something else besides this one thing, that is to say where you are right now. So he says, if you believe there is something else beside this one thing, this is not pure practice. Just take one step in this moment with wholeheartedness. 
That is the way. Take care of dirty diapers when there's dirty diapers. You know, take care of your space. Take care of your automobile if you have an automobile. When it's, you know, saying, look at me, listen to me, deal with me. So just take one step in this moment with wholeheartedness. Intellectually, Katayuri Roshi says, we think about the past and the future, but if we take one step, this shore and other shore are now. So the future is now. Because now is so interdependently connected with the future. How you live is how you will die. If you're pissing and moaning, I didn't say anything bad, <laughs> you know, uh, in your life now, how is it going to be in our death? Anyway, so intellectually, we think about the past and the future, but if we take one step, this shore and other shore are now. Taking one step already includes all the other steps. Kedigiri Roshi says, it includes this shore and the other shore. This one step is Zazen. So what is Zazen? Be alive in this moment. You are alive in this moment. You're with me. I feel it. I am alive with you. I feel you there and me talking, you know, from, it's me. It's what, you know, where I've come from, so to speak. That first Sazen I sat over on by, you know, help me pronounce the new name, Bade Maka. Thank you. I'm, I'm learning. I'm an old guy. <laughs> and I only am up here once in a while. But it should be that name, you know. Well, anyway, that period of Sazen at Minnesota Zen Center was, is this moment. I wouldn't be here without that moment. So that quality, I'd be out chasing some other new age thing, you know. And they're all good. I'm not putting them down if you're all teachers of those things or whatever, you know. Anyway. I'll just, I'll shut up here. <laughs> just let me finish here. He says, um, just make your helter skelter mind quiet and, and use mindfulness, thoughts, and views to see both life and death in this moment. Life is endless, but that's not important. What's important is that beginningless and endless life lies within a peaceful mind. Right now, right here, our life must be peaceful. To enter the gate of peace and harmony is not an idea like a, like a falling leaf. It is the total manifestation of enlightenment, the illumination of ultimate reality. So, um, you know, we, you know, move off of that real quickly. You know, it's back to, well, we're back to evaluating again, you know, weighing things, I like it or dislike it. So, um, so the other, the other day we built a new carport for the old Abbott because last year I slipped on the ice getting in my car and really banged myself up. But, um, so I said, well, we need a carport for Shokin. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. You know. So they were out there a couple of weeks ago, finished the whole thing, huge concrete trucks back there in our backyard there and putting it putting it in there the whole week. And I was out there with them talking. The same contractor did all of our work on all of our monastery buildings. So it's like a brother, you know. Very cool, so precise. I was just amazed what 
goes into just laying a pad, you know, and have footings, of course, and so on. big equipment in there, all that. That was great. Okay, it was just, it was finished. They left, it was all done. And then, you know, we have vice habit because people are always saying, Shokin, you know, who's gonna, if you, when you, I keep saying, if you croak, <laughs> when I croak, <laughs> uh, who's gonna take your place, you know? So, um, so okay, yeah. So all along we've had a vice abbot, Jikan Kondrik, who was an old student, was our first vice abbot, then one of our other priests, and now one of our other priests, um, whose name is Edo Espy. So anyway, he is head of the Des Moines Zen Center down in Des Moines. Anyway, but he's been spending more time up at Rumanji. Anyway, so he came in the next morning. They moved the trash can, you know, which is filled with sand down the hill a little bit when they were excavating. The, the rock that were there to stop you, he was pulling in a space next to this pad for the carport. It goes over the bank. And the bank was like, you know, this much higher and all the way, you know, like the front wheels rolled down halfway between you and I, Steve. And right there is a frost-free pump. You know what a frost-free pump is? It's one of those pumps you pull a handle up. And I never knew this before I got in the country. But there's a rod that goes seven feet down. And that's where the shutoff valve is. It's way below the frost line. So that's where you turn it on and let water come out. So that frost-free pump it rolled right over, you know. And water all over the place coming, you know, coming out of the ground, you know, and had to shut all the water down, you know, went down, to the, had some emergency bottles, but we ran out of those, had to go down to the creek and, you know, get some buckets of water, flush the toilet, you know, all this is going on the next week. So here it was, talk about like and dislikes, the whole, that whole project, Fixing that pump, it's fixed now. Close to it was real. It's cl real close to a thousand dollars. So, you know, the swing between wow, we got this nice carport. It was so great. Everything went so smoothly. So we're all kind of hunky dory and happy, you know. And then the next day, you know, the whole thing gets flip flopped. You know, nobody's fault. You know. First, I was like, well, how, how, did he, how could he not see that? You know, or blah, blah, you know, internal, of course. You know? <laughs> so, you know, mind going, you know, you get torqued all over the place in mind, you know. Uh, but the real issue is be alive in the moment, take care of where you are. So that's what last week was. This week, I think, oh, great, now I'm. It's all finished, that's good. Now I'm gonna come up to the cities. I'll be on vacation a little bit. But you know, it's like you have to deal with this. It's been great, but anyway, life keeps unfolding. But anyway, why am I keep, why do I keep doing this? I don't know, but I don't know another way really other than shut my mind up, and take care of this moment. And Zazen, you know, is just shutting this mind off. You know, that's that quality. It's not ignoring, you know, what do you mean shutting your mind off? You gotta think, plan things. You know, that's true, but you know, things have their own twist. So how do you embrace the 10, 10 directions? In this case, it's not just North, South, East, West, you know, Northeast, North, you know, it's up and it's down. It was the down direction that I had no idea was going to be in my face, so to speak. <laughs> That's my talk this morning. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Anybody? I want to add two cents. Do we have, do we have time for a little dialogue with the Zoom audience too? Or, okay. Anybody, 
encountered any swings where you had to see this and that and that and this? <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. I was ashamed of myself. I had a talk with my brother, and he was very angry with me because I was talking about going to mass. He said, well, I have to walk down and I have to leave at such and such a time and I'll be back an hour later and it was a Saturday afternoon and I knew he was going to mass. And I was stunned at the negative reaction I had to that. Mm -hmm. I was stunned. I was, I can't describe to you. Yeah. How, I don't even know what to say about it except that it, Horrified that I had that reaction. It horrified me. Uh -huh. I was raised Catholic. Yeah. I went to mass. Yeah. And right now, well, there are issues regarding to whether or not our president is a good Catholic and all this other stuff. Yeah. And so then I had the opportunity to talk to my brother later. And I asked him, well, how is mass? What's mass like now? So yeah. we talked a little bit about how it's shorter now. And the older the priests at this particular church, you know, they don't want to talk a lot because they're older. And he loves to follow, he likes Pope Francis, and he likes his Twitter feed. And he likes the Twitter feed of the God of God Lama. So he follows those. But just talking to him about this, how will get past my to me, horrific reaction. Yeah. It's not to me that he was going to go to mass. I don't know why he didn't, but I guessed it. And then just talking to him about it. Yeah. 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 It was so hard to let go of it. Yeah. It was so hard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, those are all, you know, who knows what triggers what yeah. in, in any of us, you know, it's like, when something gets triggered, that's the time to start paying attention, you know. And we can get triggered, you know, like in our country, you know. We can get triggered around religious issues. We can get triggered around political issues. How do you live, you know? Uh, you know, we can get triggered by genocidal, you know, activity happening and has happened, you know, in our own land, you know, which is not our land, you know, it's all of that is like, how do you live there, you know? And, uh, you know, and then, you know, people, you know, we could say, oh, well, I have to do something. That's great, you know, I'll do something, you know. Don't hang on to results always. You know, that is our attachment to everything should go this way. Life doesn't go like that. Life has its own rhythm. It goes a lot of different ways. The real issue is how do we, how do we live in peace and harmony with the whole universe? So how do you live with someone whose thinking is totally different than your thinking? You know, like, how do you live there? He is me, she is me, I am her. Where, how do you, how do you negotiate that? Just by keeping your mouth shut? Well, maybe not, that isn't the best way, maybe. Maybe it is the best way. Maybe that's all that's possible in this moment what's possible that quality is really negotiating the water it's coming out of peace and harmony coming out of oneness how do we deal with our brothers and our sisters so anyway i can talk the talk but you know as they say but you know, we all get triggered about something, you know. Somebody who doesn't put the forks in the right place. I mean, it could be that, you know. Why do you keep putting the forks that way? You know, the blade should be facing the plate. No, well, but it's ridiculous. But 
you know, there are many things that we could say are ridiculous, but still they matter. You know, wars get fought over all kinds of stuff. Anyway. One other comment? Yes, go ahead, Eric. Roger, hello, <laughs> greetings. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah. And I was a pencil for breakfast. Okay. So it said rice gruel. Yeah. I didn't. I thought that's watery rice. <laughs> that's kind of what it is. <laughs> you were on the right track, but keep going. Yeah. Later, you look pretty stern. He said, "You serve. You made rice. Yeah. So find out what rice gruel is." <laughs> yeah. Right. That's rice. <laughs> It's not rice gruel. <laughs> rice gruel has this much of a little water in it. <laughs> yeah. I got a deep on to explain it. Yeah, she was she was with me, you know. That that fart thing was, you know. <laughs> anyway, she grew up in Paris, you know. Dove, this is our first, one of our first priests we had, you know, uh, dove into ditches during the bombing of Paris, you know, the World War, uh, you know, you know, uh, snuck out of her house at midnight and rode on the back of the tanks, you know, and, and uh, her mother said, where were you last night? She said, I was riding on the back of the Americans tanks going into Paris for the liberation of Paris. <laughs> you know? So she had kind of a husba or spark you know, in her, you know. So she was really great. Anyway, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> yes, good. I just wanted to share some things about you and I took a perspective shift. Probably one of those. Do you remember writing a little bit closer to me? That's YouTube on that say it one more time. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, 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 gotcha. Yeah, far out. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah, right. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, so his father, you know, uh, would not ride on the roller coaster with him. It was called the Ring of Fire. Okay, so, uh, so he came up to me and said, "Hey, you know, my dad will ride on that roller coaster with me. Will you ride on that roller coaster?" I don't like roller coaster. I mean, not, not a roller coaster. It was a Ferris wheel that you get in and you go all the way up, upside down. You know, it's just, but you're in it like a cockpit, front and the back seat. Right. Okay. Right. So I'm, yeah, I'll do it. Uh, your father won't, your dad won't do it. I'll do it. You know, cause I know his father really well. So, so there we go. We're all the way up there and we get up to the top, you know, we're going up little by little and, um, uh, you know, you're waiting until the next person gets on. And I had just finished a, pig sandwich with a piece of meat that big, you know, at a state fair. Okay, this was many years ago. And, uh, and here I am upside down on this, and it kept going, and it kept going, and it kept going. Finally, we get off, and I stagger off. <laughs> You're elated, and I'm kind of wondering if I'm gonna lose it or not. <laughs> But it all turned out well. So thank you for saying hello. Golly, it's great. Great. Yeah. No, those were the days, so to speak. Good to see you. All right. Well, let's keep on trucking. That
phrase keeps coming up for me. So, uh, no, I think there are no guarantees. Like Ken Gary Rush, you would say life is hard sometimes, you know. So, how do we, beyond hard or easy, huh? how do we deal with day to dayness? That is your life. So, you know, sometimes we need help. Well, if you need help, you know, ask for it. But basically, you got to walk. You know, we all have to walk our own walk. So, so I should twist my own nose, Dogen says. You know, twist my own nose means, you know, I should just look at all that from myself. Thank you. It's a joy to be here. And uh, really great to see everybody. I think you have tea downstairs. No. Oh, okay. You're not doing that part. Yeah. That's one time had to let that. Be. Yeah. Okay. That just is. Yeah. Okay. Well, please continue. And uh, you've got a great center here, so it's a, a jewel. So, as they say, Buddha Dharma Sangha. So you are Sangha. So we. We help each other with our presence, actually. So very cool. Thank you very much. <laughs>